Hey guys, and welcome to episode 25 of my Out of the Park Baseball 21 series with the Chicago Cubs. And we are in, uh, we're at May 1st of 2026, and it wasn't a great month. We finished 17 and 16. Um... Yeah, uh, it, take a look. I'm not going to go through. I think what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to try to shorten these episodes down a little bit. Um, if you would prefer me to keep them longer, let me know. Um, but I'm going to try to shorten them down just a tad. So I might take out some of the superfluous. Maybe I'll, you know, going through the stats every single month and, you know, just kind of touch on some of the the key kind of some of the key players um, offensively and defensively. Or let me know if you want me to keep it the same way. I'll keep it the same way. But in April, we had a few really nice offensive performances. Javi Baez, 11 home runs in 30 games. Rafael Dever, uh, Devers has posted almost uh, um, close to an 1,100 OPS. Jason Dominguez, seven home runs, 19 RBIs. Bo Naylor, a really good start to the season. Andrew Vaughn. 875 OPS, almost a 400 uh, on base percentage. Some, some really. Eric Pena um, has played really well too. Uh, 500 slugging percentage. So it's still going to be an interesting decision once we get Mookie back. Mookie is um, he's now unknown uh, return from injury. Um, but if both Dominguez and Pena are hitting. Uh, Austin Meadows could be the odd man out. You see, I've already moved him down to the eighth spot. His numbers have started to drop, so it's an it's an entirely plausible scenario where I stick Pena in left, uh, bring Betts back, put him in right, and leave Dominguez in center. Uh, and Meadows is is the odd man out. Pitching has been um, a bit of a struggle. Marquez has pitched really well. I mean, four point uh, one point eight zero ERA thus far. Um, Yeah, Joe Ryan's pitched well. Casey Mize has pitched well. Um, but Sanchez has really struggled, as has Sir Anthony Dominguez. Really, my, you know, Ferguson, Sanchez, and Dominguez have all really struggled. And that's that's led to um, um, some issues. Hunter Barco has not pitched well. Um, 7.54 ERA actually moved him into the bullpen and brought Brady Singer back into the rotation. So we'll see how that goes there. Uh, my Rule 5 guy, Pruitt, is pitching really well. 1.62 ERA uh, thus far. So he's doing really well. Um, yeah, we are 17 and 16, three and a half games out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sim ahead to the draft. Um, we'll take care of the draft, and then we'll go from there. So hang tight. All right, it is June 4th. That means it is first year player draft day. Let's take a look um, just at us first. Uh, it's gotten a, a little better. Uh, we were 13, 4 and 1 in March, 13 and 15, so we we're 17 and 16 after April. Uh, 20 and 12 since then. We went 17 and 12 in May, and we're 3 and 0 so far here in June. Uh, our offense has been middle of the road, uh, no real power to speak of, and our pitching staff has been okay. We did make a move um, in the pitching staff because our pitching staff had gotten off to such a rough start. We decided to make the fall guy Doug Bochtler. So we have removed Doug Bochtler from his position and replaced him with Virgil Vasquez. Vasquez gets pl along better with young players. We have a lot of young players. See the team ERA since he took over has been 3.47, and we've got 14 and 7. Uh, you can see his relationships. I've got some young pitchers in here. Um, and uh, you know, Jim Pruitt, Marcano, or Sorio, those are really the three big ones uh, that are young uh that he will get along with. So um it's made a difference so far as we are up to 37 and 28, a game and a half out of first place. We did get Mookie Betts back. Averages uh, a little light so far, 241 through 30 games, but uh, he'll come along. Um, we did lose Nick Gonzalez for a couple of months with a fractured finger, so that forces Dor Dorian Gonzalez into the lineup. Obviously, defensively, he can... Uh, he's just fine. <laughs> I'm not worried about that. Uh, that will uh, more than account for his bat, which is still uh, coming along. Uh, you can take a look. Um, 
We have some some nice hitting performances. Again, our our offense has been just okay. Um, but Jason Dominguez leads the team with two point one WAR. He's hitting over three hundred. Uh, Devers ten home runs, forty five RBIs. No, not a ton of power in in the last month or so, but uh, um, still a nine nineteen nine eighteen OPS. Our catching, you know, you can't complain with an eight seventy four OPS at your catcher spot. Uh, Javi leads us in home runs, tied for the team lead in. RBIs average is starting to drop, but uh, his OPS is still right around 800. Andrew Vaughn's having a nice bounce back here, almost 900 OPS. Uh, Eric Pena's showing some power, 10 home runs already, 800 OPS. Uh, and Austin Meadows has gone to the bench, uh, so he's not playing as much. He's probably not going to be thrilled, but well, he's actually okay. Uh, but he's not better than. Um, uh, he's not better than Eric Pena at this point. Uh, on the pitching side, things have gotten better. German Marquez, 7-5, 266 ERA, 2.8 war. Casey Mize, 4-0, uh, flat 2 uh, war. Joe Ryan is 7-2, and two, uh, 1.2. Hunter Barco has done pretty well since we put him in the, in the uh, bullpen. Sixto Sanchez has come around a little bit. Um, had a really difficult uh, April. You can see 6.15 ERA down to a 3.24 in May, and then he pitched seven shutout innings in June. So we need Sanchez to bounce back if we're going to have a shot at this this year. Um, things are going to start to get expensive for us. Ryan and Sanchez are both up. Uh, their salaries are both expiring at the end of this year. Uh, there's Sanchez. Uh, actually, Ryan is still eligible for arbitration for one more year, which is good. Sanchez is going to get expensive. Hopefully, we can. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. Um, you know, we, we drop a little bit in salary, but, um, you know, you have to assume Meadows is going to come off the books. Uh, Vaughn is due for a big raise. And then we're going to lose some of these other some of these other guys that have allowed us to spend some money on, on other places. Like uh, uh, Davey Garcia has just been really solid for us year after year after year. Um, and he's going to want to get paid, I'm assuming. So, yeah, I mean, he's we're not going to be able to afford this. So, um, you know, him and Singer, you know, it's we've been able to have some cheap talent in certain places, which has allowed us to splurge in other places. But uh, that time is coming to an end here as, as some of our, our players are going to start to get expensive. So let's jump into the first year player draft. We are going to have the last pick. So let's just uh, just get started. Let's see who they say we're going to take first. Ted Hall. And he's not bad. Um, you know, if he falls to us, I could, you know, he's a good defensive outfielder. Um, let's go ahead. Let's get started. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's see what is available, shall we? So we got a couple closers. That's unusual. Ooh. This guy. That. Hmm. Uh, I'm sorry about that. I gotta remember that I am. I I have to shut my mail off when I do this. So my apologies. I just shut it off. Uh, let's take a look at pitching potential. So we got a few relievers. Um. Kevin D. Benintendo. He's a pretty good starter. Who do they think I should take? Just out of curiosity. That was the outfielder that we were looking at previously. I, I like the... I think, you know, and I'm actually going to have a supplement. I think I have a supplemental pick this year too, right? Yeah. So I'm going to get two of the next three picks. So, um, so that's good. Let's look at... Just want to see what the top hitters are in here. Herb Blanche. Good contact, good power, or good gap power. No home run power, no eye. <clears throat> um, there aren't a lot of great bats. I mean, Hall's not terrible. I think I'm going to go the pitching route. 
gonna take D Benintendo with our first pick. And I think I wanna go after one of these relievers. I don't normally take relievers early on, but eh. Actually, I don't tell. So. I just yeah, I think I might just go back to back with starting pitchers. Go D Benintendo and Helton. Never have too much pitching depth or Solace a better choice. No. I don't know. He pitched at a better school. He pitched at LSU. Um. Twenty two year old. Helton pitched in Helton's got four really good pitches. I think I'm going to stick with Helton. Let's go to our next pick. And... Let's look at batting potential. All right. So we have a few... Juan Gomez. We take him and immediately make him a bat, right? Yep, that's what we're going to do. He's only one star, but I think that jumps up once we make him a, a hitter. Still some good bats here. Catching prospect who can field really well. Pepperdine, good school for baseball. Not a lot of power. But good defensive catchers are hard to find, so Luis Salinas down um Oscar Warford <coughs> excuse me good defensively contact good gap good avoid K a decent pitcher. Uh, there's no great eye left. A power. No real power bats left either. So I think it's a contact gap kind of situation at this point. I think Warford, I think the pitcher is more valuable. And we can play him as a two-way. Uh, left. No power first baseman I have no interest in. Pitcher up here, nope. Less Dodger. Yeah, I mean, he's a 19-year-old with potentially great stuff if his movement and or control can develop. Less loader. I don't know why I said less dodger, less loader. Let's take him. That might do it. But AI auto-draft the rest. So I think what I'm going to do from here, guys, and this is where the video is going to get a little short, is normally I stop at the end of June and um, yeah, we go into July and we look at uh, international free agents and, and that sort of thing. I'm going to skip that this time and I'm just going to sim right to the end of July. Uh, so from a trade perspective, um, I don't think there's a whole lot we need. Uh, it might be beneficial for us to see if there's a second baseman out there in case Gonzalez doesn't come back uh, ready to go. My guess is he'll be fine in a month or two, in a couple months, but uh, that takes us beyond the trade deadline. So, you know, maybe we find a, a backup infielder in case we think McConnell isn't 
uh, isn't able to handle it. I mean, can't really play second, but third and short. Um, and then pitching, <clears throat> um, you know, it's never bad to find a bullpen arm. You know, maybe somebody that is a little bit more cost controlled uh, for the next couple of years. So, you know, this year when we lose Garcia um, and Singer and maybe Sanchez, we don't have to go digging in the off season. So, um, when we come back, it'll be the trade deadline. I'll go through international free agents. We'll look at stats at that point as well as um, uh, any trades that were made. So, tight. <clears throat> It is July 31st. That means it is trade deadline time. And we made, <coughs> excuse me, one minor move and then one pretty major move. Uh, we'll take a look at the minor move first. And this one came up just sort of out of the, you know, organically, I guess. I was shopping Medina, who was the outfielder we got, an outfielder that we had received from, um, get him. We got him from... Philadelphia, when we traded George Springer um, at the beginning of the 2024 season, or at the end of the 2024 season, uh, we traded Medina, or we offered him up, and uh, we there was a lot of interest. Um, but I wanted to find somebody maybe that was a little bit higher ceiling, lower floor kind of thing. And we found that in a 20-year-old out of Toronto, Hector Sanchez. <coughs> and you can see... Just elite level power, 95 potential power. Um, you know, if these numbers develop, he's a 50 home run, 280, um, 280, 290 average with a lot of additional gap power and, and a good eye. He's a very good defensive center fielder, uh, very good speed, uh, number 83 prospect in all of baseball. So I pulled the trigger there uh, just to add a little more, I guess a little higher end depth to our um to our uh minor league system losing Med medina was you know wasn't ideal but um i've got a couple other players that can kind of fill these roles both offensively and defensively in the minors already the other deal we made was with the new york mets and i looked at a couple things i looked at who was on the trading block and then i looked at who the um upcoming uh free agents were and we ended up moving um esteban castillo i just i don't know why i clicked off it but he's the number nine 19 prospect in baseball 19 year old pitcher uh looks you know looks like he could be really good down the road um but we have a ton of pitching depth uh so you know this one hurts a little but um you know there's no such thing as a pitching prospect, right? So hopefully, for our sake, he doesn't develop. But that was the big nugget we gave up. We also sent Brady Singer, um, who, you know, had pitched pretty well for us. Uh, last year pitched really well. Pitched pretty well this year in a swing role. Uh, as well as Deshaun Knowles. Again, using some of that outfield depth to, uh, to get some of the things we needed. Uh, Knowles had played well last year. This year he had... Kind of come back down to earth a little bit, so figured now was as good a time as any to move him. Uh, and in exchange, we pick up Eloy Jimenez. So uh, New York gets a little bit worse offensively, but gets better pitching and defensively, and also picks up a pitching prospect down the road. So you can see Jimenez is being paid 18.5 through the end of the season. Um, you know what you're going to get with Eloy. High average, a lot of power, a lot of strikeouts. And you can see that's what he's given. So his last full year with the White Sox, 2024, he hit 43 home runs, knocked in 130. Last year between the White Sox and the Mets, he hit 52 home runs and drove in 139. Uh, this year, uh, 22 home runs and 68 RBIs with the Mets. We pick him up in his first 15 games, hits 303, six home runs, 16 runs knocked in with a 990 OPS. So He's on pace for another 40 home run season this year. Only 29 years old, already has 319 home runs. So um, that immediately improves our offense. If you look at our lineup now, we also have Nick Gonzalez back. So we're really, really deep now. 
Uh, we're going Betts, Gonzalez, Jimenez, Devers, Vaughn, Baez, Naylor, and Dominguez against lefties or against righties. And against lefties, we're going Betts, Vaughn, Jimenez, Devers, Gonzalez, Baez, Dominguez, and Alvarez. That sends Pena to the bench, <clears throat> but he's become uh, a really solid uh, all three outfield position kind of guy. So uh, he'll get his playing time. Uh, the, you know, his his numbers have slipped here over the last month or two. So he'll get his playing time. And that really does sort of mean the end of, of Austin Meadows time here with the Cubs is uh, he's really struggled this year. It was really, really good. That first season from Tampa uh, got injured in 2024, but was still pretty good. And you can see the numbers have just dropped, <clears throat> excuse me, every year. OPS 941 to 851 to 794 to 666. So this will be the end of Austin Meadows' time in Chicago. Um, hopefully he will um, he'll play nice through the end of the year. Uh, so let's take a quick look at the team stats. We'll look at standings and um, league leaders, and then we'll call it an episode. So you can see Raphael Devers uh, leads us with a 3.8 war, 21 home runs, 84 knocked in, 9-11 OPS. <clears throat> Excuse me, we've already gone over Eloy stats. Jason Dominguez is following up his breakout 2025 year with another really good year this year. Uh, 283, 340, 44, 824 OPS. Good for a 2.8 war at, the point, at this point. Is he still not committed an error? Ah, he made his first error in... Um, five big leagues or four big league seasons this year. So uh, playing really well in center field as well. Dorian Gonzalez uh, has actually started to hit. He's up, uh, up to a 706 OPS, but because his fielding is so good, he's at a 2.6 war. So if you look at this, 73 games, already a 13.4 zone rating. Now, I have no desire to trade Nick Gonzalez, but... If the opportunity arises, we have our ready in the wings, um, second baseman ready to go. Bo Naylor continues to have a solid season, 820 OPS, 2.6 war. Mookie Betts in really half a season so far, putting up a 2.5 war. Uh, average is starting to climb up to an 860 OPS. Andrew Vaughn continues to produce, uh, not hitting a ton of home runs, but getting on base at a 380 clip. Um, Javi Baez. Home runs and RBIs, that's what we're getting out of Javi and decent uh, decent defense still. Kevin Gutierrez has raised his average to 317, so he's hitting really, really well this year. Uh, I don't suspect we're going to bring him back next year, but we'll see. Nick Gonzalez, um, OPS is a little light. Um, sorry about that. I forgot to shut off my uh, mail again. Let me that right now. right now all right sorry about that um again we talked about Pena not really hitting Alvarez is not really hitting and Meadows is not really hitting so um overall the offense has picked it up and I think with Jimenez in the lineup that will really lengthen it and make us a whole lot tougher pitching things are looking really good again German Marquez up to a 4.8 war he's only 10 and 7 but I mean, he's pitching. He's pitching great. Casey Mai is pitching really well. 143 strikeouts, 130 innings, 3.2 WAR. Sixto Sanchez has really bounced back nicely. 3.6 ERA. Uh, he wants a lot of money. Um, we have to figure out what we want to do with him because we have a lot of pitching on the way up. So um, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do with him. I'd like to bring him back. He's only 28. I mean, that's the other thing is that none of my pitchers are old. Uh, and they're all pitching really well, so who do I who do I move? You know, Hunter Barco. We moved back into the rotation once we traded. Um, uh, what's his name? Oh God, I I can't I uh, can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Brady Singer. There we go. Once we traded Brady Singer, we moved uh, <laughs> we moved Barco back into the rotation. Davey Garcia pitching, again, really well in what is likely his swan song as a Cub pitcher. He wants to get paid as a starter, and we can't and won't do that. So let's see if this has come down at all. 
It's come down a little bit, but I'm still, I mean, I'm not paying him eight years, and I'm certainly not paying him 14 to 15 a year. Sir Anthony Dominguez pitching pretty well. Uh, Jose Marcano, um, he's been great. 28 hits in 42 innings, 56 strikeouts. Uh, if you look at his numbers, man, this guy is just going to be crazy good. I wish he had just a tiny bit more stamina. Um, what I might do is next spring training is stick him in the rotation and see if we can get an increase to that stamina. Uh, if I can't, he's going to be my stopper next year, and I'm going to pitch him till his arm falls off. Christopher Osorio has pitched well in his first full season for us. 42 strikeouts in 38 innings, 2.61 ERA. Jim Pruitt struggled, but that's to be expected. Um, if he continues to develop, he may be with the big club next year. Uh, if not, we may start him in AAA just to um, continue to allow him to develop. Detmers and Caleb Ferguson are both negative war pitchers on the year, so we may be looking to move on or upgrade from these guys in the offseason. So let's look at the standings. <clears throat> so Tampa Bay leads the American League East with a 60-55 and 55 record, two games up on the Orioles. The Royals are a half game up on the Tigers with the Memphis Colonels, only three back, and the White Sox only three and a half back. In the West, the Los Angeles Angels are in first, with the Mariners a game back. Look at Mike Trout. So we haven't looked at him in a few episodes. Only hitting 239 this year. Looks like he's starting to slip. He stayed healthy this year, but he's starting to slip a little bit. Uh, currently at 538 home runs, 2,200 hits. And I, he probably will still get to 600 home runs. He probably gets 2,500 hits, but I don't know if 700 and 3,000 are in the books for Mr. Trout. The last two seasons have um, really affected those chances, I think. Uh, New York Mets lead the NL East by two games over the Phillies. We're up by six on the Brewers. Uh, we've played really well uh, over the last month, month and a half. And the Dodgers have an eight and a half game lead over the Padres. Let's look at <coughs> some statistics and then call it a day. Start in the American League. American League batting leaders. Gabe Rincones leads the American League with a 345 batting average. Jordan Alvarez with 45 home runs at the trade deadline. Julio Rodriguez, youngster out of Seattle, 92 RBIs. Wander Franco, 406 on base percentage. Joey Gallo leads with a 649 slugging. Gallo also, Joey Gallo leading with a 1, 1.054 OPS. Very impressive. Wander Franco, 7 war. Uh, Riley Green leads in hits. David Calabrese leads in stolen bases for the Red Sox. Joey Gallo leads in OPS+. Plus. Miguel Sano's already struck out 182 times this year. <clears throat> uh, pitching leaders. Brandon Markland with Kansas City. Leads with an ERA of an even three, so this is a very high offensive season. Corbin Martin leads with 13 wins. Grant Holmes, 14 losses. Emilio Pagan with Kansas City, 28 saves. Corbin Martin with a 3.3 war. Yeah, Corbin Martin's leading the American League in everything. He's having a really nice season. 148 innings picks, pitched. Jackson Coar leads in complete games and shutouts. Daniel Espino, 169 Ks thus far on the year. Brandon Markland, a 162 ERA+. Plus. Stanley Guzman, the former number one overall prospect who struggled through a 7-17 and 17 year a season ago. is 11-7, and 7, 3 2, 6 this year. So he's had a very nice season over the National League. National League pitching leaders, Noah Syndergaard with the Mets, 2-6-5 ERA. Matthew Libatore. Uh, 13 wins. Franco Ailman with Charlotte has already got 60. He's 0 and 16 on the season with an 8.84 ERA. So that's not good. Alex Vesia with Miami with 26 saves. German Marquez leads the National League in war. Christian James in is pitched. Garrett Crochet already has 196 strikeouts. Uh, Noah Syndergaard 0.88 whip. 
Not as many Cubs up here as you would expect, considering how good our pitching staff has been, but there's still a couple months left. And National League batting leaders. Fernando Tatis, 335 average. Walking Cabrera, a 25-year-old rookie. Uh, 38 home runs in his rookie season to lead the National League so far. Gavin Lux, 90 RBIs. Juan Soto leads in on-base slugging and OPS. Uh, he's having another fantastic season. Uh, Tatis leads in war. Nick Gordon in hits. Corbin Carroll in stolen bases. Eloy Jimenez leads in total bases, actually. That's interesting. Um, yeah. Juan Soto with a 184 OPS+. plus. Ed Bear Perez already has 10 triples on the season. So, yeah, it's uh, uh we've bounced back nicely here over the last uh over the last couple of months. Again, we were uh just 17 and 16 at the end of April, uh but a pretty good March, an okay June and a very good July have vaulted us back into a pretty comfortable lead in the American or the National League Central, 6 games over the Brewers, 7 and a half over the Cardinals. Uh, anything else I want to take a look at real quick? Uh, I'm gonna look at some of our stats. So for some of our prospects, so Chris Adam, Chris Adams can't really field, but is an elite hitter. So if we can't bring back Jimenez on a cheaper contract, I don't think that's gonna be possible. Um, Adams is a definite possibility, uh, putting up an 877 OPS in Triple A right now. Uh, Luke. He's actually had a worse season this year than he did last year. Um, 25 doubles, 5 home runs. He's walking more, which is good. Um, but he's going to have to pick it up a little bit if he wants. The home run power isn't developing as much as we would like. Stewart, we just called up to AAA about a month ago. He's playing really well. 351, 901 OPS. So he's probably going to be that all-purpose backup outfielder next year for us. As you can see, he's got a great, great, great and defense. Doesn't have a great arm, but, um, you know, he can play left and center without any problem. The outfield arm can be a problem in right, but, you know, it's picking at nits, as they say. Uh, Quintero, 249, uh, down in AAA. Sanchez, we talked about him already. Gonzalez, who's our sh second base shortstop prospect with a ton of power. Um, called him up to double A's, hitting 266, 296, 532 so far. Um, he wants to be playing in the majors. He's not ready. I mean, I'm penciling him in to replace Javi Baez. And we've got Baez for the rest of this year and next year. I'm assuming Baez has got a team or a player option for, for next season. I assume he's going to take it because it's like $23 million or something. Um, so Gonzalez will do double A, triple A next year, and then he's slated for the big leagues probably the start of 2028, I guess it would be. So he's coming along. He's fine. Um, Bernal is a pitcher we've had in our system forever. Um, and he's, he's coming along slowly. He's up to double A. Um, but yeah, three good pitches. Chacon is a second baseman we've had in our system forever. And he's coming along as well. Can play a few different positions. Got some good speed. You know, he's still a ways away, but he's coming along nicely. Anybody else I want to look at? I don't think so. Luke Lito. Uh, his progress has stagnated a little this year. Uh, 419 ERA, but it's first year in AAA and he's only 23. So uh, we'll let him probably repeat that next year as well. So that's going to do it. So what I'm going to do, guys, is that instead of coming back at the beginning of August, I'm just going to come back at the end of the season, unless we are in a pennant race. Uh, and then I'll come back a little bit sooner than that. Again, I want to try to keep these videos from being over an hour. So um, I'm not sure how <laughs> well I did this time around, but we'll see. Uh, at any rate, uh, leave a like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to leave me comments or your thoughts. And until we talk again, everybody take care. Bye-bye.